Hello everyone, welcome back to Planet Linux. As you may know, the GNOME desktop environment is one of the most popular user interfaces on Linux. And while it can be incredibly powerful and versatile, it's not always the most user-friendly right out of the box. There's a lot of functionality under the hood that isn't the easiest to find. And that's exactly what I want to cover in today's video, as we'll be taking a look at roughly 10, depending how you break things down, tips and tricks that make using GNOME that much easier and more user-friendly. While I'm sure you'll be familiar with some of the things I cover in this video, my hope is that there are at least one or two things you didn't know about and that will make your life easier. But before we get into that, I do want to remind you real quickly that if you enjoy the type of content I post here on Planet Linux, you can be notified of new content by subscribing to the channel and marking the notification bell icon, as well as following me on Twitter at PlanetLinux98. But without further ado, let's get into this. So as you may know, much of the GNOME experience centers around the Activities Overview. This is where you can manage your open application windows, your workspaces, search for just about everything on the system, and view all of your installed applications. And while it is fairly easy to click the Activities Overview button here at the top left, a faster way of accessing this from anywhere is by just pressing the Super key on your keyboard. On most keyboards, the Super key will be your operating system logo, such as a Windows or Ubuntu logo. And simply tapping this will take you directly to the Activities Overview. Now from here, you can immediately start typing to search for something. You don't have to click on this text box to begin doing so. As soon as you press the super key and open up the activities view, you can just start typing whatever you're looking for. This will search for installed applications, files and folders on your system, as well as many other things, including software that you could install or web search results. All sorts of applications can tie into this search functionality, and it's really easy to access just by pressing the super key to open activities and beginning to type. On a similar topic, when it comes to opening your list of installed applications, you can go into the overview and then click this application grid icon. However, there's a faster way to do this. You can simply press the super key twice quickly to immediately open the application grid. Alternatively, you can use the shortcut super plus the letter A to go directly to applications. Also, while we're in here on the application grid, of course, Clicking on an application will open it, but if you want to open an application directly onto a specific workspace, such as the empty one to the right here, instead of opening it and then having to drag it over to another workspace, you can simply click and drag the application you wish to open to the desired workspace, and it will open right on there. Speaking of workspaces, you can move between them by holding the Control and Alt keys while pressing the left and right arrows. In prior versions of GNOME, this may require using the up and down arrows instead. If you'd like to move your current window to a different workspace, make sure that window is focused, and then hold the Control, Alt, and Shift keys and use the arrow keys, either left and right or up and down, depending on your GNOME version, to move the window between the different workspaces. On the topic of keyboard shortcuts, you can adjust most shortcuts in the GNOME desktop in the settings application by going to Keyboard and then scrolling down to Keyboard Shortcuts. Here you can view a categorized list of all the different shortcuts or search for a specific one you're looking for. And you can click on an existing one to change it or, on the main shortcut screen, you can go to Custom Shortcuts and add your own. This allows you to name it, enter the commands that you want it to execute, such as the name of an application to open it, and you can click to set the shortcut. Also on the topic of keyboard shortcuts, if you want to see a list of available shortcuts in most default GNOME applications and many third-party ones that embrace GNOME's design guidelines, you can press Control question mark or Control shift slash 
to display a list of available shortcuts. As mentioned, this works in numerous different applications. In most GNOME applications that have a search button, or any third-party app that follows GNOME's human interface guidelines, you can immediately start typing from anywhere to begin searching. For example, here in the Files app, beginning to type will search the current location for files and folders. Another example, by opening Settings and then immediately starting to type, will allow us to quickly find a specific setting. Now, while the default GNOME experience may be a bit limited for a lot of people's tastes, there are a couple easy ways to add and customize a lot of functionality. And the first method of doing this is through an application called Tweaks. This can be easily installed through most software centers, and it provides a host of options for customizing your GNOME experience. Highlighting a few here, for example, we can choose to have independent images for our desktop background as well as the lock screen background. We can also customize the fonts for various aspects of the interface, as well as adjust the font scaling from here. There are a few nice keyboard and mouse settings here as well as a convenient one to show the pointer location by tapping the control key. When enabled, simply pressing control will highlight the location of the mouse cursor on the screen. This also lets you manage the applications that will launch whenever you log into your system. This is convenient for managing applications that just decide they want to launch every time you start your computer, and you could turn those off here if you have any, and of course you can add some if there's any that you use regularly. A common complaint with the GNOME desktop is that it doesn't include a minimize or maximize button in the window header bar. This is an intentional decision by the GNOME team based on how they feel the ideal workflow should be, but the tweak tool does allow you to add either or both of these icons back to the window, as well as choose which side you wish for them to be on. While the Tweaks application does give you a lot of ways to customize your GNOME experience, this is really just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do. The GNOME desktop has an incredibly powerful extensions platform that allows you to install small extensions that add on to or change the behavior of the GNOME desktop. You can browse for extensions in your web browser of choice, though Firefox and Chrome based browsers tend to work the best and you'll want to go to extensions.gnome.org. From here, you'll be prompted to install a small browser extension that allows you to manage these extensions directly from your web browser. And now you can browse the website for these extensions. While there's tons here, and I definitely recommend taking a look at all sorts of them, I'll highlight a few right now. One here is dash to dock. This extension, once installed, takes the favorites dash here in the bottom of the activities overview and makes it a permanently visible dock anywhere on your screen, and it has a lot of customization options. But with any of these extensions, you can click the toggle button here to install it from the web browser. And then once installed, you can manage it from the extensions application. If it's not installed by default, you can get it from the software manager. As this app finishes installing, we can see that Dash to Dock has now been installed and enabled here, and is now showing up at the bottom. This shows all of our favorite applications that were in the Activities Overview, and it's also added this nice little trash icon, and of course we have our Application Grid. And inside the Extensions application here, we have our installed extension here, Dash to Dock, where we can toggle it on and off here as well as adjust some settings for it. This has pretty much everything you'd want, such as this position on the screen, whether it auto-hides or not, uh, its size, and the icons that are displayed on it, all sorts of settings here for it. And we can also remove the extension from here, or visit its website. 
Another nice extension along similar lines is dash to panel. Much like dash to dock, this one takes your favorites from the activities and makes it a convenient panel here that's a lot like something you would see out of Windows. Button here on the left gives you your application view. You of course have your favorited and opened applications here along the bottom, and your notification area, and your quick status menu. Again, inside extensions, this has a whole lot of settings here that allow you to really customize how this panel works and really tailor it to your desired experience. Now, a common criticism with GNOME these days is the lack of legacy app indicator support here in the top right of the panel. Many applications, such as Steam or Dropbox, will have indicators that give access to quick application menus and settings. However, by default, GNOME doesn't support this. A very nice extension that will add that support back is this rather lengthily named App Indicator and Case Status Notification Support extension. While the name is a bit lackluster, it does its job well. And now you'll see I have the extension installed, and it shows up here in the extensions application. And with Steam running, for example, you'll see that it shows its indicator here in the top right of the panel. And its menu integrates well into the rest of the GNOME desktop. Of course, as with many of these others, there's also a few settings here about exactly how you want to customize the look of this extension, so feel free to mess with this if you want. And these are just a few of the many extensions available for GNOME, on top of a few built-in ones that many distributions come with, and you can find here in the Extensions app. So feel free to browse this extension's website, as there are all sorts of great extensions here that can add a lot of functionality to your system. So that just about wraps up this video. I hope that you've found at least one or two of these tips to be helpful and that they can improve your GNOME experience. If you've enjoyed this video, then I'd greatly appreciate a like. If there's anything you'd like to say, feel free to post in the comments. I do my best to reply to all of those. And to stay up to date with all the latest content I'm putting out on the channel, consider subscribing and marking the notification bell, as well as following me on Twitter at PlanetLinux98. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time here on Planet Linux.